Hello, my name is Joel Schuler, and I am the Processing Specialist here at CQI. In this lesson, we will briefly discuss uniformity, one of the guiding principles we follow in the post-harvest. By seeking uniformity in different aspects of the post-harvest, we can mitigate risk and increase the quality and consistency of our final product. While we try to answer as many questions as we can in the cube processing courses, post-harvest processing is very complex. Every origin, harvest, and really every day within the harvest can provide unique situations. When you come across a new situation, you can ask yourself, which of the following options available to me will mitigate risk and increase uniformity? And it's really the uniformity aspect of this that we will focus on in this lesson. Some of those questions can be, can I process different cultivars together, including different colored fruit? Can I leave some pulp pieces in with my drying parchment or do I need to hand sort it out? How often should I rake the drying coffee? How thick can I make my drying layers? Should I stir or agitate the coffee when it's fermenting? Should the bricks be the same for every batch? Or can I combine the floaters back in with my lot after I pulp them? Saying that you should focus on uniformity is not to say that you should never take risks or that everything must always be perfectly uniform. In fact, taking risks is a key source of progress. But decisions should be done with intent, a careful eye, and documentation. Furthermore, risks should only be taken if you can absorb the losses from a less than desirable result. In this brief lesson, we will take a look at three examples of where you should seek uniformity in the post-harvest processing and why. The first instance of uniformity we will discuss today is uniformity of maturation. While we learned from day one in coffee that we should only pick ripe coffee, fruit, to maximize quality, even farms that perform 100% selective manual harvest must deal with differing maturations. And given the pressures of decreasing rural labor and increased labor costs, along with the pursuit of unique flavors by using different maturations, the bounds of what ideal ripeness actually is, and the feasibility of extracting only the defined maturation range from the plant are likely to be a moving target as we move forward. We should seek to process coffee of uniform maturation. In other words, you should separate out different maturations into different lots before processing. Here are some of the reasons why you should do that. First, different maturation levels have different risk factors during post-harvest processing. For instance, unripe coffee has a much higher chance of forming the black defect if it is exposed to higher drying temperatures. Dried on tree coffee has a higher risk of bringing mold from the field to the wet mill. Another reason is that different maturations have different flavor profiles. While perhaps the most obvious of these is the astringency of unripe coffee, many growers have been separating out overripe or raisin coffee when the fruit has very dark hues but it still has some of the mucilage present because of its unique flavor profile. Finally, along with different quality and flavor potentials, different maturations have different initial moisture contents and will dry at different rates because of the state of the various tissues that surround the bean. For example, overripe or dried on tree coffee has a much lower moisture content and will dry more quickly than ripe and underripe coffee. We will look at this more when we look at uniformity in drying. Next, we look at uniformity of fruit size. Fruits of varying sizes can pose problems in the pulping and potentially in the drying. Since pulpers work by applying pressure to the coffee fruit, fruits of different sizes will receive different amounts of pressure. If the pulper is calibrated to correctly pulp the larger fruit, smaller coffee fruit may pass through unpulped. If it is calibrated for the smaller fruit, then the larger coffee fruit will receive too much pressure and the beans will likely become damaged. A particular issue can occur with small unripe coffee fruit. Since it is roughly the same size and has a similar texture to parchment coffee, it passes through the pulpers, even the screen pulper, also called the unripe separator. By placing a screen before the pulping process, these small greens can be removed and dried separately. A reasonable question is, well since we know that the size grader will remove these beans later, why should we care about them now? The answer is, well which is more uniform? Size can also be used to separate out raisin coffee from dried on tree coffee, given their differing volumes. Since the raisin coffee oftentimes has a higher quality potential than the dried on tree, this can be advantageous to growers looking to maximize their quality and potentially offer a different flavor profile. Though it is not usually a major issue, coffee of different sizes, even if it is the same maturation, 
We'll dry at different rates and we'll take a look at drying uniformity next. Perhaps one of the most important instances of seeking uniformity in the post harvest is with uniformity of drying. A common question is how often should I rotate the coffee when I'm drying it? And the simple answer is as often as you need to in order to ensure that the drying is uniform. If the drying is not uniform then even though the moisture content might read 11%, it is possible that some coffee will be above 12% while some coffee might be over dried. Not a good situation. Coffee that is stored above 12% moisture content will degrade more quickly during storage since microorganisms and even the coffee bean itself will thrive off that water and deteriorate the quality of the bean or the seed. On the other hand, coffee that is over dried is not only an immediate financial loss to the producer, who is paid by weight, but will also lead to more breakage at the dry mill and quality losses during storage. Some ways to increase uniformity in drying are to separate coffee by maturation prior to drying, as we discussed previously. Dry the coffee in thin layers, especially at the beginning of drying. When raking the coffee, rake in the direction of your shadow to ensure that the windrows align with the sun and thus receive uniform sunlight, as shown in the picture here. Once the coffee has reached half dry, usually after several days, bound the coffee and cover it at night. If mechanically drying the coffee, use lower temperatures, less than 40 degrees Celsius coffee mass temperature, and even perform intermittent drying, applying heat for 12 hours and then letting the coffee rest for 12 hours. This is far from an exhaustive list, but hopefully it has provided some insight into how important uniformity is in the post-harvest. Thanks for listening today, and to learn more about CQI, our mission, and education, please visit us at our website. Thanks.